I'm really sorry to insult you, but your iPhone is starting to look a little bit small, at least in comparison to these. This is the iPhone 6 with a 4.7 inch display, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus with a 5.5 inch display. Yes, these have got bigger screens, but there's lots more in them too, including new cameras and NFC chips to help you kill your wallet. Both the 6 and the 6 Plus have new Retina HD displays that display far more than you've been able to see on your iPhone 5 or 5S. Like a bigger Android phone, it's great for seeing more of web pages, and Apple's added a special landscape mode for the home screen with the 6 Plus. On both phones, you can move through web pages and emails with swipes on the side. But I really prefer the smaller version for my smaller hands. The 5.5 inch version looks like a small tablet. Look at it! Here it is! All right. Wow, that's really big. It is really big. Look at this comparison to my face. Comparison to old phone. All right, can we turn it on? Yes. Okay. Hi folks, Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com, the ChrisVossShow.com. Hey, guess what? We've got the new gold iPhone 6 Plus. We're going to review it. And of course, we've been reviewing the iPhone 6 today at the AT&T store, so be sure to look at our other videos. Give us a subscribe and a like. Let's get into our review of the iPhone 6 Plus. One thing we want to mention on it is the battery that's in the iPhone 6 Plus is definitely nice. It's definitely wonderful to have that much larger battery. It just seems to last forever, and that makes all the difference. So, let's take a look at what we think. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice with the iPhone 6 Plus, and the iPhone 6 for that matter, is it's got these beveled edges uh, basically taper off around the side, uh, giving it kind of a rounded or completing the rounded effect that you get from front and back. It really gives a feeling of thinness to the phone that makes it feel thinner than it really is. But you will be surprised when you get the phone that it is incredibly thin, which makes it very nice and beautiful. Um, it's the first thing that will probably come to your mind and your eyes, you feel it. It's definitely not that heavy when it comes down to it, even the Plus, as big as it is with the bigger battery and everything. Uh, and it's just very beautiful with its rounded edges and everything else. The only downside of the rounded edges are it tends to be fairly slippery. There's not that flat edge that you have with the 5 and 5S to go with, and you're definitely going to want a case for this because you're going to slip this out of your hand. It's just completely rounded on the edges. Does that make it bad? No. It makes it a very beautiful looking case and very awesome to look at. You're probably not going to see the case much, of course, once you put it into an iPhone case, but you definitely want to protect your investment really when it comes down to it also. The other reason you're going to want a case is you can see that the camera eye sticks out quite a bit. And, well, it is a sapphire lens. It's supposed to be protected against scratches. The LG G2 and I believe the G3 has sapphire scratches and there's been reports of those lenses scratching so it is possible to scratch a sapphire lens cover and while they put one on the iPhone's 6's uh, um, definitely you want to get this thing uh, covered up with a case. It keeps the 8 megapixel rear shooter from its predecessor though it does come with a new sensor an f2.2 aperture lens, faster autofocus and optical image stabilization which is not found in its smaller brethren. Video also gets a boost as well especially with the ability to capture slow motion video at 240 frames per second in 720p resolution. Indeed, the modes that are available in the iPhone 6 camera application might seem quite limited, but we have found that iPhone quality in terms of this picture uh, has been pretty good in previous iterations, and we don't expect it to change in this one. On the other hand, we have the 13 megapixel Sony x RS sensor of the OnePlus One combined with a six part lens construction with the f2.0 aperture, a dual LED flash, and a great software package that, in contrast to the iPhone 6 camera app, has a lot of different features which will allow for a great camera experience that's catered to the way that you want it to be. On the front, you get a five megapixel camera with a wide lens that enables an 80 degrees field of view, which is good for some selfie lovers out there. And finally, in software, we revisit iOS versus Android. But in the case of the OnePlus One, it is CyanogenMod 11S. It's basically a special release built specifically for the OnePlus One to take advantage of all of its hardware and features. You get a clean, minimalistic, stock-like experience.